Akram, Aventurine. Patch 2.1 never made it so difficult to decide who you should pull. On one side, we have an extremely powerful DPS capable of ignoring defenses. On the other, a sustained unit that offers not only a lot of shields, but also various buffs to the team. Sit tight and I'll explain how each one of them works and hopefully help you in this decision. Akram is a weird unit. Although she's nihility, she isn't focused on damage over time or focused on inflicting debuffs. She seems more like a erudition unit with sprinkles of nihility, but that's just my humble opinion. Her gameplay is focused on her ultimate, however, she won't use energy. To trigger her ultimate, you need to obtain 9 stacks of slash stream, which can be obtained either through her skill or by applying debuffs to an opponent. However, this debuff can be applied by any ally, apart from the positive point of Akram dealing extraordinary damage with her ultimate, she can also accelerate it by either being faster or having other allies apply more debuffs. Her skill is way more common and simply does a blast attack, however, its goal is to both apply more slash stream and to apply another debuff called Crimson Notch. The second debuff increases the power of her ultimate for each stack applied to that specific opponent. Her talent ties all this gameplay together. Besides transferring Crimson Notch to another character on the field after they die, her talent allows Akram during her ultimate to ignore 20% of all type resistance and reduce their toughness independent of what element they have, making her a great DPS to be used to cover any kind of element. That way, her strengths are she does some serious damage and probably is going to compete with Imbibita Lune and Jin Yu for the crown. She has no dependence on energy, she will ignore any kind of type resistance, being very flexible on what kind of enemy she's going to perform against. Kind of a mono quantum by herself. She also has a very good AoE damage, and if you like playing with nuke characters, she will be extremely fun to play. On the other hand, her weaknesses are very clear. She needs to apply the buffs to accelerate her ultimate, and that limits your options for comps. It's by no mistake that her banner has Pila and Gwynaifen. She also depends on Nihility units to increase her damage, and she doesn't have many options for Lycoms. Since most Nihility characters are focused on damage over time or the buffs, and none of them are hyper carries, most of the stats are focused on attack or affect hit rate instead of crit. That way, due to having a very unique mechanic, there are very few Lycoms that fit perfectly with her gameplay. Aventuring has a more standard gameplay as a shooter from the preservation path, but with some perks that makes him unique. To begin with, his skill allows you to provide shields to all your allies, which can be stacked up to two times. Therefore, you'll have plenty of flexibility in deciding when to apply your shields. His ultimate will deal damage to a specific enemy, but it will also apply a debuff to that same opponent. Any ally attacking this enemy will receive a crit damage buff. Additionally, you will get between 1 to 7 stacks of blind bat. But what is blind bat and how does it work? This is where his talent comes into play. Aventuring will also gain blind bat whenever an ally with his shield is hit, or after Aventuring himself is attacked. Upon reaching 7 stacks, Aventuring performs a follow up with 7 hits. But his talent doesn't stop there. It also provides an effective resistance buff to all shielded allies and makes Aventuring resist crowd control. Due to this kit, Aventuring has many strengths. He'll be a great shooter, capable of quickly recovering and stacking the shield. There is a high chance of him being skill point positive depending on how he is played. He'll be really easy to build, focusing on defense. He'll deal some damage and possibly be similar to Lucha, who despite being a healer can also do some considerable damage. And Aventuring has some good light cone options, like day one of my new life and Destiny's Threads for Rover. And to be honest, he doesn't have any significant weakness. Perhaps the only notable one that I can mention is that he's from the imaginary element. And if you have Lucha, you might not want another sustained unit from the same element. Both characters will offer great value to your account, but if you're looking for one that will have a greater impact, send the Ali Aventuring. He's a sustain unit that will buff your team. However, let's say that you already have two sustain units and you are satisfied with them, Ekron will be a good DPS option. Her potential can rival Jin Liu and Bibito Lune in damage. Additionally, if you have any kind of element that you don't have a good DPS to cover, she'll be a great fit. That's it, I hope this video helps you decide who to pull in patch 2.1, but let me know in the comments who you're going to pull for, and as always, subscribe and see you in the next video. It's that time again to get busy with it, best go find your friends and get jiggy with it, copy light in the flip.